15 degrees in radians and vice versa. Uh, so the reason for this is in math 3, a lot of times when you're dealing with angles, you measure them using degrees most of the time. Uh, and most of the time in real world situations, you use degrees. But uh, when we study trigonometric functions, we're mostly going to focus on radians. Uh, and if you're going on to calculus, then you must all use exclusively these radians. Uh, so it's really more important that you're familiar with radians as opposed to degrees. Now here's the technical definition of a radian. Uh, because you may have seen it before, or you may have seen radians before, but you're not really sure what it means. Okay, so here's what it means. It means a central angle of a circle has the measure of one radian if it intercepts an arc that has the same length as the radius. So I have a circle drawn on your paper there for you. We can label it here. Okay, this is our radius, and this is also a radius. Okay, it says that it intercepts an arc that has the same length. So this curved length right here, this curved length, is the same as the radius. It's just a curved length instead of a straight length. So that angle right there that intercepts that arc is one radian. So you can kind of visualize about the size of a radian. It's approximately 57 point one radian is approximately 57.3 degrees. Um, now, typically when we deal with radians, we're going to talk about uh, pi is the most common um, reference with radians, and here's why. Uh, because if you talk about going around the entire circle, okay, let's say that our radius is 1. Okay, If the radius is 1, what's the circumference of the circle? If the radius of a circle is 1, what is the circumference of that circle? Pi times 2. You equal pi times 2, right? Because the uh, circumference is 2 pi r. If the radius is 1, then that circumference is going to be 2 pi. So 2 pi radius is equal to 360 degrees. If you go all the way around the circle, okay, 360 degrees, that is 2 pi radians, which is also equivalent to 1 revolution around your circle. Uh, most likely we use this relationship right here that half of it, 180 degrees, is pi radians or half of a revolution. Okay, so half of your circle is 180 degrees uh, which is equivalent to pi radians. Okay, so we're going to know those two things and we're getting ready to use that relationship. Uh, Excuse me. So, if the question is, how many radians are in 90 degrees? Well, I'm going to start. I've got that, that uh, circle uh, there on your paper. We always start on the positive x-axis, so to speak. So, that's why I have that red mark right there. Obviously, it doesn't show up as red on your paper. But it is a, a thicker line there. We always start there, and 90 degrees would be that vertical line that I have right there. Okay, this is 90 degrees. Um, so just thinking about it logically, how many radians would that be? Half. Half of pi, right? Okay, it is pi over 2. Now let me show you how we convert it when it's not something nice and neat <clears throat> um, where it lands on a, a nice fractional spot there. For example, 210 degrees. Now, you may not know exactly where to put 210 degrees, but we do know that it's more than 180. So 210 is about right here in a circle. Okay. Well, that's not a nice fractional part where we can logic through how many radians that is. So we're going to use this relationship that pi radians is equal to 180 degrees. So it's kind of like um, in chemistry when you're converting between two things. You put what you want to get rid of on the bottom. We want to get rid of the degrees, and we want radians, so we put pi on top and 180 degrees on the bottom. Now, we want to keep this a nice and neat fraction, <clears throat> so either use your calculator to reduce it or reduce it by hand. 210 and 180 are both divisible by 30, so that would be 7 pi over 6 is 210. 
210 degrees in radius. If you did it in your calculator, divide 210 by 180, turn it into a fraction. Okay, 345 degrees, okay, similar. It's not a nice, neat, pretty uh, location. 345 degrees uh, would be about right here. Actually, it's closer to the red line there, sorry. <clears throat> because it's almost 360 degrees, but not quite. Okay, I just want you to kind of start getting a visual idea of where these are. Okay, let's convert it to radians. Multiply it by pi over 180. I know those are both the size, but we're getting a little bit of time, I think, to fully reduce that. So 345 over 180. Turn it to a fraction. 23 pi over 12. Okay, we always leave the pi in there. You know, we don't multiply that out. Okay, express radians in terms of pi. Okay, questions? Yes. Yes, you can. We have, we're not going to talk about them just yet, but yes, we can have negative angles. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's go from radians to degrees. So we need to flip over that relationship. We want degrees, so 180 is going to go on top and pi is going to go on the bottom. Uh, now, this is not written in the best way to look at it as a fraction. Okay, that's pi over 3 radians. So if we want to convert that, we multiply it by 180 over pi. Check it out. The pi's cancel. And 180 degrees divided by 3 is 60 degrees. Pi over 3 radians is equivalent to 60 degrees. Okay, 11 pi over 6 is the next one. Multiply it by 180 over pi. Cancel the pi's. Uh, instead of multiplying 11 by 180, I'm going to divide 180 by 6, and that gives me 30 degrees. So 11 times 30 is 330 degrees. I'm just showing you how to do it without a calculator. Okay. Technically, yes, you can multiply the 11 by 180 and then divide by 6, but I think it's just as quick to do that. Okay, 3 pi over 4. Multiply by 180 over... Pi, the pi's cancel. Um, 4 goes into 180 45 times. Yeah, 45 times. And then 3 times 45 is 135. Now, this last one, notice it doesn't have a pi. If it doesn't have a pi, then don't add a pi to it. Okay, don't add a pi to it. Uh, so we still multiply it by 180 over pi, but this time there's no pi to cancel. So we're just going to multiply this completely out. 5 times 180 over pi. Please do not use 3.14 for pi. There is a pi button. Please use that. Okay, so this is 286.479. Forgotten what I just said. 286.479 radians. Okay. Technically, you don't have to write the word radians. Um, if you don't write anything, it is assumed that you're talking about radians. So, yes, I'm going to be super picky on quizzes and tests. If you leave the degree symbol off, oh, wait, that is in degrees. Uh, but that brings up a really good point. There should be a degree symbol there. Uh, if you leave off the degree symbol, then I'm going to count off because otherwise it's assumed that it's radians. Okay? If you don't put the degree symbol when you need the degrees, it's assumed that it's radians. Uh, so you've got it. You have to put it. You don't have to write anything when it's radians, but you do have to make sure you put the degree symbol when it's degrees. So, I want you to practice with this, okay, on your worksheets. I want you to do numbers 1 through 12. Notice on the worksheet, some of those are negative. We haven't talked about negative angles yet. 
Well, that just means that you're going to stick a negative in front of the radians and stick a negative in front of the degrees when you convert it. Okay? We'll talk about what that actually means in a few minutes.